a very warm good morning to all present in the live session multiple intelligences i would like to welcome our honorable principal sir and all the teachers who have joined this session today's the resource person is our one of the best teacher of literature mr partho sir today he will be expressing his views on multiple intelligences let us start the session first of all a huge thank you to stnc and uh, coe patna nevertheless i'm obliged to my to our honorable principal sir and uh, obviously uh, beside me our shankar sir the technical ex expert whom i fondly call the computer savvy good morning to all of you my scholastic teachers and uh, it's my privilege obviously i'm feeling really blessed to have been given a chance to become a resource person for the session which uh, title is multiple intelligence my dear friends colleagues first let's talk about the multiple what is multiple intelligence and how it was originated multiple intelligence is a theory first posited by harvard development psychologist Howard Gardner in 18, 1983 that suggests human intelligence can be differentiated into eight modalities visual spatial verbal linguistic musical rhythmic logical mathematical interpersonal naturalistic and body kinesthetic in contrast to other notions of learning capabilities for example the concept of a single iq the idea behind the theory of multiple intelligence is that people learn in a variety of different ways now let's talk about how to define the concept of multiple intelligence actually it's a theory describing the different ways students learn and acquire information this multiple intelligence range from the use of words numbers pictures and music to the importance of social interactions introspections physical movement and being in tune with nature the theory posits that an understanding of which types of intelligence a student may possess can help teachers adjust learning styles that suggest certain career paths for learners the theory has come under criticism as every uh, you know <clears throat> even the moon has a flaw so everything has a every coin has a flip side so this theory also it had come under criticism from both psychologists and educators where many believe that the eight intelligences represent mm -hmm. in a talents and abilities cognitive psychologists have further stated that there is no empirical evidence to support the validity of this theory now just to brief the idea the eight types of there are eight types of intelligence we are all smart in different zoner it varies from person to person the theory of mult, mult, uh, intelligence as i have already stated it was created by dr howard gardiner in 1983 and uh, his theory places an emphasis on the idea that the traditional understanding of intelligence by means of iq testing is far too limited to broaden this nation notion of intelligence gardiner introduced eight different types of intelligence <coughs> consisting of 
लॉजिकल मैथमेटिकल लिंग्विस्टिक म्यूजिकल स्पेशल बॉडीली काइनेस्थेटिक नेचुरलिस्ट इंटरपर्सनल एंड इंट्रापर्सनल as defined by God, then the question arises what is intelligence according to gardener it is the ability it is the competence to solve problems or fashion products that are valuable in one or more cultural settings so this is about intelligence each person may have different multiple intelligence because the inclination of Uh, uh, particular persons varies from person to person it varies from person to person even everyone can possess more than one of it as gardener divided the multiple intelligence into eight kinds now now let us classify the multiple intelligence <clears throat> first one is naturalistic that deals with with the ability to identify classify first the eight types of multiple intelligences are first naturalistic second bodily that is kinesthetic musical spatial verbal that is linguistic logo that is mathematical interpersonal and intrapersonal these are the eight types of intelligence multiple intelligence segmented by howard now let us discuss bit by bit one by one to have a proper knowledge about each segment of the multiple intelligence we should start with naturalistic <clears throat> first one is verbal or linguistic intelligence that deals with the ability to use words and language these learners have highly developed auditory skills and are generally elegant speakers that is gift of the gab as we know in english that person who is very who can who is capable of speaking at any time that is extemporarily they are known to have been blessed by the gift of gab they think in words rather than pictures they just inculcate within their mind while speaking if we have that strong linguistic intelligence you might we might learn better by reading by memorizing by playing words that is scrabble anagrams password and using the internet moving to the next type of multiple intelligence is that is logical or mathematical intelligence this deal with deals with the ability now the logical and mathematical intelligence deals with the ability to use reason logic and numbers these learners think conceptually in logical and numerical pattern making connections between pieces of information always curious about the world around them these learners ask lots of questions they are very curious by nature and they are very experimental they like to they always like to do some experiments and if we have that strong logical mathematical intelligence we might learn better by doing role plays exercising while reviewing visiting museums institutions 
parks and of course asking logical questions all these increase the intelligence that is bodily yeah or kinesthetic intelligence that is very useful for both of us and obviously using the internet using the internet also enhances the bodily intelligence that also increases the bodily intelligence children with this type of intelligence are skilled and have preferences for activities such as reading talking telling stories cracking jokes writing poems learning languages and playing word games so these all enhance their capability for bodily intelligence now next visual or spatial intelligence the ability to perceive the visual friends my scholastic teachers these learners tend to think in pictures and need to create vivid mental images images to retain information they enjoy looking at maps charts pictures videos and movies people who develop special uh, special intelligence are good at solving special problems such as drawing and painting reading maps and special intelligence or visual uh, visual special ability has been defined as the ability to generate retain retrieve and transform well structured vis uh, visual images it is what we do when we visualize shapes in our mind eye it is the mental fit that architects and engineers perform when they design buildings first they visualize before they imagine then they go for the construction that is the special thing the capacity that permits permits a chemist to complete the three dimensional structure of a molecule once again it's an it's all about imagination conceptualization three dimensional structure of a molecule or a surgeon to navigate the human body first of all he should have he should have to have the visual intelligence in him for doing these impossibles very possible for them which is impossible which seems to be impossible for others that really become possible for them who are who are visually intelligent it is what michael angelo used when he visualized a future sculptor trapped inside a lump of stone just imagine what was the vast visual intelligence he had such skills are only one aspect of a person's overall intelligence but research suggests that spatial thinking is an important predictor of achievement in stem s t e m or science technology engineering and mathematics put together it is uh, the acronym is stem science technology engineering and mathematics for example pre scholars pre schoolers who are better at visual spatial relationships develop stronger arithmetic ability abilities in primary school middle school students who are good at mental rotation are more likely to achieve in science classes that is the variation teens with excellent special skills are also more likely to secure employment in the visual arts or business and there is even evidence that early special ability predicts a young child's reading skill as it is said that morning shows the day so clearly special skills 
matter it really matters is there anything we can do to boost visual visual special ability there are some ways to boost it up there is a lot we can do and if we can find a checklist of practical tips for enhancing spatial intelligence here but how do we know it's possible now it's a matter of it's a really a big question let's take a closer look at the science of special training nature and nature how hormones and practice affect spatial performance people often assume that spatial intelligence is a biologically determined cognitive trait a gift you either have or don't this attitude may stem in part from observed sex differences numerous studies report that males possess superior mental rotation skill it's bitter but true there is also evidence that special ability is linked with the amount of tes uh, testosterone a fetus encounters in the womb in a recent experiment on 42 women researchers found that they could temporarily boost mental rotation skills by giving volunteers a single small dose of testosterone but whether or not the sex difference in mental rotation is influenced by hormones there is compelling evidence showing that people can enhance their special abilities with practice now it was all about the visual or special intelligence let's move ahead the another segment that is musical intelligence very interesting the ability to produce an appreciate music music has got a soothing effect it can soothe or pacify a ridden heart this much we know this the ability to produce and appreciate music these musically inclined learners think in sounds rhythms in patterns it's very obvious that when we feel doom or we when we feel ridden by the adversities of life we like to have a very soothing and pacifying music which really soothes our ridden heart this is common to all everyone loves music even the nature loves music animals also love music there is a there are some evidences that animals can be tamed by through music so music has a very great healing effect and it compensates the any loss now understanding the musical intelligence this ability to accurately perceive and or produce acts of sound rhythm tone and melody people with strong musical intelligence have an aptitude for learning and playing musical instruments singing identified melodies and rhythms differentiating different sounds and instruments this is very important they learn through listening and can remember and respond to a variety of sounds including human voice environmental sounds and music they easily recognize musical styles collect music our musical information and are easily distracted by sounds or noise in the environment music can be of two two kinds one is known as cacophony another is known as symphony the music which really soothes our heart from inside when we are ridden by the apathies of life the music which soothes us is really known as sympathy but the music which really you know embitters our mind or really disturbs us it is it is cacophony so we don't like to listen to those that music especially i'm talking about sy symphony that's very soothing indeed 
people find symbolism in music are able are able to express ideas and feelings through sound and music suppose when we are happy and we are, if you are asked to sing a song we definitely like to sing a song which is a happy one and we are when we are plagued or um, ridden then we sing like a song like tere duniya se dur chala ho ke majboor so that is the that is that shows our mental status how do how do we feel that we express those feelings through music and singing they, and they are able to express ideas they love music and for most of them music is life yes for somebody music is life music is bread and butter for them they earn through music they live music they live in music they they people say that i can talk in music i can smile in music i can eat music i can i can live music it may be easy for them to remember a long list of songs and they can easily hear music in their head even when it is not playing around them that the humming they feel in their mind and their heart they are they are musically they are, they are musical minded people they always feel if if they hear the rustling of um, um, you know rustling of leaves they find a music now that is what special about them they may often surprise their friends with their ability to learn a tune just by hearing it so these people are god gifted you know music is a something very divine and there are some people who just once after having listened to a tune once only they can just fabricate it they can copy it and they can amaze their uh, companions by just coming up to their expectation just by listening once only characteristics of musical intelligence let's talk about that people with strong musical intelligence are inclined to number 1 easily learn songs or play musical instruments there are so many people who don't remember their phone numbers mobile numbers but they can remember long songs together old songs old melodies have an excellent sense of rhythm just you could you just ask them to go off the track they won't go they will they will begin singing they will start singing in on the track they they can they can feel the beat or they can feel the sur or tal they uh, hear music in their heads throughout the day music is something which just through our ear goes to our head and mind that has got the soothing effect of music identify the different instruments playing on in a song in a song there are so many instruments are played in the orchestra but people who are have a strong sense of music they can identify oh this is the piece of violin this is a piece of flute oh no oh, this is the tambourine is being played by so they have that quality use information in their voices while speaking to others use intonation they use it while speaking to others and they are also good at dancing because they have got that sense of rhythm they are very rhythmic by nature now traits of musical intelligence first perceives tonality the tonal quality they perceive very well maintains rhythm they cannot go off they they sing they start we are off or right they just give, get back to the rhythm because they have got huge sense of great sense of rhythm perceives pitch they know when to sing in a high pitch and the low pitch and in husky voice they know how to sing and where to sing how identified melody melodies they are very melodious by nature so they can identify the melodies very well and careers that respond it has got a great career you know we are great fans of musical mu- musical legends in india recently we have lost bappi lahiri and lata mangeshkar obviously the indian uh, nightingale so we still whenever there is a song mere watan ke logo we start shouting that is by lata mangeshkar and that is their contribution that is musical intelligence my dear friends and colleagues now let's move to the other zoner now the next zoner is interpersonal intelligence interpersonal intelligence hmm? 
So we'll talk about interpersonal intelligence now. <clears throat> As we know that we, today we are talking about the multiple intelligence and now we are talking about inter interpersonal intelligence which deals with the ability to relate and understand others. These learners try to see things from other people's policies and view of view in order to understand how they think and feel. They often have an uncanny ability to sense feelings. They have got the tendency, they have got the special ability to, to, uh, to sense feelings of others' intentions and motivations. Now talk, let's talk about interpersonal intelligence. Interpersonal intelligence refers to the ability of a person to relate well with people and manage relationship. That is, at least in this early world, maintaining or managing relationship is really a hard nut to crack. It enables people to understand the needs and motivations of those around them, which ha helps strengthen their overall influence. People with interpersonal intelligence seem to stand out in a crowd as people with lots of friends and can easily adapt to social situations. In fact, we can, in nutshell, in nutshell we can say they are the most sought after people. Wherever they go, they are having a huge fan following. So that is, that makes them stand apart. They're, they communicate effectively and enjoy participating in discussions and debates. They have got the, they are really blessed with the gift of gab. They are extemporarily, they can speak like anything. They can steal the show. They are the, the stealer. So they can just win hearts by speaking. Individuals with interpersonal intelligence and characterized by their sensitivity to other people's mood. And he also feel, he also feels the mood of the people what to say, how to say, whom to say, moods, temperaments, motivations, and feelings. Okay. Gardener has got some specific ex examples of uh, interpersonal intelligence in his 2006 book entitled multiple intelligence he says that new horizon in, in, in new horizons in theory and practice gardener used the example of anna sullivan you must be knowing anna sullivan she was a blind uh, she was deaf and dumb and anna sullivan and uh, helen keller was a deaf and dumb. anna sullivan was her teacher and, and really he, she enabled helen keller which what she is known for uh, a legend. Anna Sullivan, a teacher who taught Helen Keller, although Sullivan was nearly blind, he himself was blind in her childhood, he, she had to sustain the, uh, that blindness. But she could overcome and that's why she could feel the, you know, terror and agony of that Helen, Helen uh, really felt. We say that as the wearer with the shoe pinches, she, she had been a victim, so she could feel the uh, pains and agonies of Helen Keller and she came up with a severe a mentor for Helen Keller. Although Sullivan was nearly blind and possessed, little formal training in teaching children with special needs, that is impaired ones, she took the task of teaching Keller, which was a Herculean task for any teacher who was teaching a blind and uh, you know deaf and dumb girl, which was just next to impossible. But yes, Sullivan came up. She stood by Heller like a pillar of strength, like a towering personality. Helen Keller, she was a blind and deaf seven-year-old only. Sullivan exhibited high in interpersonal intelligence while dealing with Keller, and she effectively understood her special needs, moods, temperament, and motivations. Though her interpersonal, through her interpersonal intelligence, Sullivan helped Keller become one of the leading authors and lectures, lecturers of the 20th century. She was a living legend. So there is no denial at all, Helen Keller. According to Gardiner, 
people with interpersonal intelligence easily empathize with the others because they know the feel now they they under, have the feelings because they had been the victims so they can better understand are gifted in dealing with other people he said that people with such a skill are naturally inclined to become politicians because they are very good motivators teachers therapists diplomats sales people yes it is said in selling that the the product is not sold the man behind the product is sold because of his speaking or intelligence interpersonal intelligence and negotiation negotiators the occupations require people who can look at situations differently and take an adaptive approach they can very easily uh, um, go into the skin of the situation they mold everything under their fold and they can take the people um, handle the people and just uh, fulfill get have their motives fulfilled there are some famous people who are known for known for their interpersonal intelligence like we have got mahatma gandhi the mother father of our, the father of nation for india mother teresa best known for her charity work and opera winfrey media she was a media proprietor actress producer very sought after international figure she is bill clinton everybody knows attorney general and governor of arkana because the president 42nd president of us united states now now we teachers now let us see what role can we teachers play in the classroom as far as interpersonal intelligence is concerned classroom offers a platform for students with interpersonal intelligence to showcase their rare skill act rare skill set teachers can help such students put into put into use their skills through a variety of activities it is all up to the teachers one of these activities is offering the students an opportunity to teach other students yes when we share anything with other we should have more than we need suppose we have to give someone 100 bucks we should have at least 110 bucks so when a student start uh, starts teaching the other student he should have he should uh, he has to have that profound knowledge and ability it allows them to interact with their colleagues and practice their listening skills it also helps them enhance their communication skills by listening and responding to the questions presented by other students another activity that teachers can use to help students with interpersonal intelligence is creating group group work projects group work allows students to share their different perspectives and receive feedback on their performance students with interpersonal intelligence will be useful in such projects projects especially when it comes to delegating duties and holding the group members together they really play a very vital role when there are conflicts among members these individuals can help reconcile any disagreements and encourage numbers of numbers to stay focused on the ultimate goal that's all for from interpersonal intelligence now sell into the next zone now my dear colleagues it's about intrapersonal intelligence previously it was interpersonal now it is intrapersonal intrapersonal intelligence deals with the ability to self reflect and be aware of one's inner state of being that's very important these learners try to understand their inner feelings dreams relationships with others and strengths and weaknesses if we have strong interpersonal intelligence we might learn better by avoiding distractions that is the, that is going to be the key avoiding distractions establishing personal goals working alone relating personal experiences that is intrapersonal intelligence now next naturalist intelligence my dear friends my dear colleagues natural intelligence deals with the abilities abilities to recognize plants and animals to make this distinctions in the natural world to understand systems 
and define categories. If we have a strong naturalistic intelligence, we might learn better by studying outside, learning in the presence of plants and pets, relating environmental issues to topics, smelling, seeing, seeing touching, testing, observing natural phenomenon. Actually, it's the ability to identify, classify, and manipulate elements of the environment, object, animals, or plants. Thanks to this type of intelligence, which enable us to recognize the differences between species, groups of people, and or objects, and understand how they relate to each other. It is considered that naturalistic intelligence developed in the times of the first human beings when survival depended on recognizing, use, uh, recognizing useful and dangerous spices, species, on observing the climate, or reading, on reading the land, and on expanding the range of resources available for food. As a general rule, people with high naturalistic intelligence have the following characteristics. First, they express a desire to understand, understand how things work. They care about the environment and like to be in touch with nature. They are good at identifying fauna and flora. They like to explore and discover new species and behaviors. They are interested in using tools to help observations, tools like microscopes, binoculars, telescopes. They show an interest in science careers like biology, botany, chemistry, zoology, etc. Now, activities that develop, develop naturalistic intelligence, generally children with natural, naturalistic intelligence, intelligence show an inclination towards the natural world as well as towards what, what human beings have created. They delve beyond superficial observations and want to go deeper and make de deduction, deductions about how things function and their nature. They also have a tendency to classify objects and sort them in categories. In relation to the animal and plant kingdom, children with this kind of intelligence express their desire through, through uh, wanting to have pets and they are fascinated and infatuated by how plants grow. They like to explore and discover natural environments and other forms of life and they often entertain themselves by observing details like lines of ants, the flight of birds or the activities of insects. Usually these things are overlooked by the common people. The laymen, they, they hardly pay any heed to all these things. But yes, the people with natural, naturalistic intelligence, yes, they do. They, they, they follow, they, they just observe how the ants make a line, bee line, how does the um, how does the plants how does the plant how does the plant grow they they follow every stage of this very they are very keen they are very curious to know what other whether what laymen never do so that is the speciality furthermore it is not uncommon to find them performing improved experiments there are different activities that can that can help a child develop the naturalistic intelligence which can be grouped into contact, observation, and exploration. Classification and hobby. Now, hobby encourages the youngest to have hobbies, such as plant, planting seeds at home, or collecting fossil stones and leaves. John... Uh, we will learn about John Ebright, the great scientist. He had the fascination for collecting fossils, stones, leaves, and obviously butterfly. That is because of his naturalist intelligence. John Ebright, everybody knows him. Class 10 book, it is there. The making of a scientist. So we teach that he had an inclination, a knack 
for doing something which other people uh, other people um, would not have give any heed pay any heed to that's really made him the real scientist to be read in the book now friends let's sail into another section and that is intelligence to traditional view versus mi theory what does traditional view of intelligence say 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 it says intelligence can be measured by short answer tests contrary to that multiple multiple intelligence theory theory says that short answers answer tests are not used because they don't measure disciplinary mastery or deep understanding they only measure rote memorization skills and one's ability to do well on short answer tests number 2 traditional view of intelligence says that people are born with a fixed amount of intelligence that is static contrary to that multiple intelligences intelligence theory says that human beings have all the intelligence multiple intelligences but each person has a unique combination or profile it, it varies but everybody has the multiple intelligence third one the traditional view of intelligence says that intelligence level intelligence level does not change over a lifetime but there is a contrast view of that multiple intelligences theory it says that we can all improve each of the intelligences through some people though some people will improve more readily in one intelligence area than in others it varies according to the multiple intelligence theory but it really it does increase time to time intelligence consist of inability in logical languages whereas multiple intelligence says that there are many more types of intelligence which reflect different ways of interacting with the world in traditional practice teachers teach the same material to everyone whereas the multiple intelligence pedagogy implies that teachers teach and assesses differently based on individual individual intellectual strengths and weaknesses teachers teach a topic or subject but the multiple intelligence theory says the teachers structure learning activities around an issue of question and connect subjects teachers develop strategies that allow for students to demonstrate multiple ways of understanding and value their uniqueness that is the difference multiple intelligences and eight ways of teaching first intelligence second teaching activities third one is teaching materials fourth one is um, instructional strategies fifth one is sam sample teacher presentation skill intelligence that is linguistic teaching activities it is lectures discussions word games storytelling and journal writing teaching materials books type Rec tape recorders stamps stamp sets books on tape in uh, instructional strategies read about it write about it listen to it and sample teacher presentation skill is teaching through storytelling second one is logical or mathematical brain teasers for teaching activities brain teasers problem problem solving science experiments mental calculations number games critical thinking teacher materials calculators math math manipulatives science equipments and math games is instructional strategies strategies read about it write about it listen to it quantify it think critically about it put it in a logical framework experiment with it sample teacher presentation skill is <coughs> sorry scholastic question that is the eight ways of teaching now special special for teaching activities visual presentations art activities imagination games visualization metaphor 
teaching materials, graphs, maps, videos, art materials, cameras, pictures, library, instructional strategies, see it, draw it, visualize it, color it, mind map it, sample teacher presentation skill, drawing, mind mapping, concepts, and body kinesthetic, teaching activities, hands-on learning, drama, dance, sports that teach, tactile activities, relaxation exercises, teaching materials, building tools, clay, sports equipment, manipulatives, tactile learning resources, and instructional strategies, build it, act it out, touch it, get a gut feeling of it, dance it. And sample teacher presentation skill using gestures, dramatic expressions. Next, musical, that is teaching activities, rhythmic, learning, rapping, using songs that touch, soothing, and teaching materials, tape recorder, tape collection, musical instruments, in instructional strategies, sing it, rap it, listen to it, sample teachers, presentation skill using voice rhythmically, interpersonal teaching activities, cooperative learning, peer tutoring, community involvement, social gatherings, and simul simulation, simulation, and teaching materials, board games, party supplies, props for role plays, for instructional strategies, teach it, collaborate on it, interact with respect to it, sample teachers, uh, presentation skill, dynamically interacting with students. Now, my dear colleagues, intelligence inter intrapersonal, the teaching activities, individualized, individual, individual, individualized instructions, independent study, options in course of study, self-esteem building, teaching materials, self-checking materials, journals, materials, materials for projects, instructional strategies, Contact it to your personal life, make choices with regard to it, reflect on it. Sample teacher press is bringing feeling to presentation. Naturalist teaching activities, nature study, ecological awareness, care of animals, teaching materials, plant animals. Naturalist tools, gardening tools, instructional strategies, connect to living things, and natural phenomena, and sample teacher press is linking subject matter to natural phenomena. Actually, now let's talk about something practical. Actually, we need to have some teaching activities for every donor. Suppose bodily kinesthetic, we need to have, we need to get involved in some teacher activities like hands-on learning, 
drama, dance, this, this add, these things add to the variations and make our teaching very interesting. Actually, when we talk about, suppose, suppose we are teaching Julius Caesar or Merchant of Venice. So when we talk about Merchant of Venice, we, 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 like, to, we like to have students acting like either um, Bassanio or Antonio. No one likes to become Shylock. And if a girl um, likes to become Portia, then she has to get, be in the uh, guise of a lawyer. Because Portia was a lady and she, she really could uh, save uh, 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 Antonio from a certain doom, uh, from the hands of Shylock. So these things, when we ask the students to enact as Antonio, Bassanio, or Shylock, we, we okay. Uh, suppose we, we we when we talk about suppose we uh, we have a ch uh, child acting in acting like Antonio, another is Bassanio, or another is Shylock, and suppose we are creating the court scene. Then court scene. When Antonio is requesting or just begging the forgiveness from Shylock, and Shylock being a crook one, he clearly denies and defies. He, he is just adamant and rigid to, for his bond to be honored. And he, he wants a pound of flesh from Antonio's heart. Because Antonio has, the bond was forfeited, Antonio could not pay him the 3,000 uh, 3,000 uh, bucks that he had taken for Bassanio. So now he has lost the bet. He has lost the game. So he was ready mentally. He was prepared to to fall uh, to fall victim to um, do to Shylock's barbaric demand. Even the Duke intervened, saying saying uh, requesting Shylock not to go for that. Uh, and even Bassanio, Bassanio, the man man whom Antonio had to take the loan for his courtship with Portia. Then Bassanio, then Bassanio also requested, um, requested uh, Shylock to forgive it and to take double of that amount, 6,000 6, du ducats instead of 3,000 ducats. But Anto Shylock, he was an embittered soul. He was a Jew. He, had, he, was, he claims that he had, been, he had been mutilated. He had been humiliated. He had been tortured. He had been... Um, he had been mutilated once again because he was a Jew. There was a racial discrimination existing in, the, in, the, in that um, uh, society. So it was his turn to, to settle the score with Antonio and he was adamant to, to, take, to avenge his, all his insults that he had, he had been um, extended to. Then see the, see the uh, uncanny uh, um, trait of Portia Portia came, came, emerged as a savior in a disguise of a lawyer. Though she was a girl, but she, she, was, in a, uh, she was in a disguise of a young lawyer. And she, she also requested um, you know, Shylock to give up. But no, he wouldn't. Then Portia agreed to that bond to be honored. Then Shylock was, great, Shylock was extremely happy. And he termed Portia that... He was, a, he, he was a Daniel, he was a Solomon, he had a matured show, head on, on, her, on his immature shoulder. He was, in fact, he was foxed by the traits, of, by the traits and gates of Portia. Then Portia allowed her, okay, she consented, to, and, but she asked Shylock to fetch a weighing machine. Because according to the condition, he had to take just one pound, not a pinch less, neither a pinch more. So now he, he, had, to, he had to have a weighing machine as well as a surgeon at his own cost. Because, and then she found out the loop and hole of, of the bond uh, that it did not allow Shylock to shed a single drop of blood. Now Shylock was trapped in his own mesh. Now he had to give up and it was the victory of wit over age. And that's why it, it was the multiple intelligence. That is a burning example of multi, multiple intelligence. After Helen Keller, we talked about, uh, you know, um, Portia in the epic of Merchant of Venice. So it was her multiple intelligence that she could, she, just no one, could, no one could see, the, could read between the lines of the bond. But it was Portia who, who could read, uh, uh, go read between the lines 
she found out the loop and hole and she trapped uh, uh, Shylock in, in his own mesh. The hunter was hunted and Shylock was ultimately, Shylock had to, had to accept the punishment he was given. He had to uh, share his own belongings with her, with his daughter who had eloped with Lorenzo. So it is a burning example of multiple intelligence that was, you know, seconded by the great uh, dramatist of all time, that is William Shakespeare, Merchant of Venice. It's a burning example of multi multiple intelligence. I hope uh, not only you, I also, we have enjoyed this session uh, discussing multiple intelligence. Now, if we talk about the great uh, dramas, then we can talk about Julius Caesar as well. That is once again by, by, um, by um, great Shakespeare. Just do you remember, do you remember the scene where um, uh, Brutus was stabbed by, um, Caesar was stabbed by his own friend. Um, Caesar, uh, Brutus was stabbed from back by his own friend and he screamed, "Et to Brut means Brutus, Caesar never could, never could imagine that Brutus could do such a nasty thing. But he was taken in by, by Cassius, he was trapped in the, in the um, conspiracy or in the plot hatched by Cassius to get rid of Caesar because he thought that he was too ambitious to become a, the king of Rome. And that's why he planted, he planted Brutus because Cassius knew it very well that no other than Brutus could save them once Caesar was uh, killed because he knew that Caesar was a demigod. Caesar enjoyed a demigod status in Rome along with definitely Brutus, Marcus Brutus, he was also a demigod but Caesar was, Caesar was also a hero of Rome. So Cassius knew it very well once Caesar was killed then people will be inferi infuriated, they would go for a vandalization, they will sabotage everything. So last but not the least, before we conclude, let us see the benefits of using the multiple intelligences, intelligence approach in our school. It will, it will provide opportunities for authentic learning based on your students need, interests and talent. The multiple intelligence classroom acts like the real world. The author and the illustrator of a book are equally valuable creators, students become more active and they become involved learners. Parents and community involvement in your school may increase. This happens as students demonstrate work before panels and audiences, activities involving apprenticeship, apprenticeship learning bring members of the community into the learning process students will be able to demonstrate and share their strengths. Building strengths gives a student the motivation to be a specialist. This can in turn lead to increase, increased self-esteem. When you teach for understanding, your students accumulate positive educational experiences and the capability for creating solution, solutions to problems in life. That's all from our end. Thanks for a patient hearing. Have a very good day ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Partho, sir. Thank you. Hope you all have enjoyed the session and uh, might have uh, understand the concept of uh, multiple intelligence. How multi what is multiple intelligence? how it is useful, how can we implement or to, uh, how can we enhance multiple in, uh, intelligence. These all topics were uh, dealt by our resource person.
Mr. Partho Sarkar sir, uh, attendance link will be given to you in due course of time. If any of the participants have anything more to discuss or to ask with our resource person, Mr. Partho Sarkar, you are welcome sir, madam, anyone who wish to ask anything, please go ahead. Uh, Partho sir will be with us. Within few minutes, the link will be provided to you. Uh, please fill the attendance come assessment form. Dear colleagues, as we know, the time is limited. It's hard to say goodbye and thank you. But before that, please make sure you should fill the attendance come assessment form. I would like to thank all the teachers, Principal Sir, COE Patna, and of course, how can we forget today's resource person, one of the most intellectual person of our school, Mr. Partho Sarkar. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for this session. Thank you, everyone.